speak to my heart, oh God. Or, in this case, speak to my heart, God. <laughs> always add that, oh God. It always sounds like something that you should add to it or somehow be a part of it. In all of these, particularly, because some of them run long, I try to read a portion of them, if not the whole thing. So sometimes, if it seems like you don't get a chance to read the entire devotion, then it's because they are, some of them run a little long, and they're more like a Bible study than a devotion. But I enjoy them, and they always seem to fit. So, in saying so, when the future is uncertain, does looking into the future leave you feeling uncertain or apprehensive? How are you going to face it? How are you going to make it? Events over the past few years have been astonishing, haven't they? Our nation attacked, our troops at war again, more and more upheaval in the Middle East. In many instances, our hope has been stirred. In others, we are discouraged, even fearful. People by thousands have lost their jobs. Our government's debt looms threatening, threateningly over us. And yet we continue to give away billions of dollars. Taxes claim a major portion of our salaries. Yet more and more of our tax dollars are spent to cover the ineptness and graft of men. Physical calamities suddenly devastate homes. Rage and brutality are tearing apart our cities. AIDS is a major threat to the welfare of our nation, but people still refuse to forsake that sin that is spreading the disease. The innocent are jeopardized, and guilty are protected. We call good evil, and evil good, and we make everything relative. In the midst of all this, we feel impotent to do a thing about all that is happening around us. It is as though we are caught in a current of self-moving events that are about to dash us against the jagged rocks of an almost amoral nation. Deep in our heart of hearts, we know, don't we, that unless things change radically, God is going to have to judge our land. What do you do in times like these when the future is so uncertain? Let me share some things I believe the Lord has laid on my heart. Although the future is uncertain to so many, it is not uncertain for believers. If you read and study the Bible, you can see that the events occurring in Europe, the Middle East, and Israel are valid indicators that our Lord's coming is near. Things are not going to get better, only worse. Therefore, it is imperative that you, that you are prepared and that you have fulfilled your duty in preparing your family. How? You need to evaluate your lifestyle. Take inventory. What is important? What's occupying your time? Where, where are your priorities? It is absolutely crucial that you develop a strong and intimate relationship with the Lord. If you know Him and His Word, you'll have a security that will keep you from being shaken in the storms that are on the horizon and may even now be in your circumstances. God has given you a multitude of promises to cover every contingency of life, but you cannot appropriate what you do not know or believe. God said, according to your faith, be it unto you. God doesn't run away any second-hand faith shops. Your relationship with Him is your number one priority, for it keeps every other relationship in its proper place. The reason so many marriages and families are falling apart is that they have failed to build a proper relationship with God through His Word. Also, you must learn God's Word so you won't be led astray. In the last days, there is going to be a great deception and a falling away from the faith. You must not be deceived. And in that regard, not knowing the Word of God could be disastrous. You need to build your relationships with family and friends. One of the major reasons our society is falling apart is that we've neglected interpersonal relationships. We're too busy even doing good things. In the last days, the love of many will grow cold toward one another and toward God. God said that. Many parents lose their children to the occult, to drugs, to alcohol, and to promiscuity because the security of a strong sense of family, love, and discipline is missing. If you have children, or grandchildren, you have this responsibility. If you neglect it, beloved, you'll answer to God. Turn off the television and talk to one another. 
Open your home to others. A television set that portrays perverted, decadent lifestyles will be little comfort, help, or companionship in the days to come. It will give you its version of what's going on, but it won't hold your hand or meet your needs in the trials. Invest in the work of God. Your treasures here are going to be destroyed, so put your money in the Lord's work, which will pay eternal dividends. Watch how you spend your money. Concentrate on the necessities rather than the luxuries. I know that may not be as much fun right now, but it will keep you from being ashamed when you see him face to face, when you have to give an account for your earthly stewardship. And when you do invest your resources, make sure those to whom you give are accountable. Let's seek to know our Father better. Strive to live a more godly life and live as an overcomer through these last days. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. You know, people have often told me that they believe in the rapture or that they believe in we're in the latter days. So then I go, okay, that's good. So how are you living? Do you live like you believe it? Or do you just go on pretending you believe it? Because, you see, if you live what you believe, then you will demonstrate that by your actions. If you believe that you're in the latter days, you would do as the devotional says, as God was speaking, that you would consider your lifestyle, consider your family members, that you would begin to plan out that you don't have a retirement to look forward to. You're going to see the coming of Jesus Christ. You're going to know that the unsaved loved ones are going to hell. So we need to be aware of the reality of heaven and the travesty and tragedy of hell. We need to make sure that we have done all that we can to pray and to care, to consider and to share what we know of God as we develop even our own relationship with God to get more intimate and more real than we ever have before. Because if there was ever a time for you to give up being selfish, now it's it. There is nothing left for you in this world except for the end of the world. Sadly, that's a reality. And like I tell people, and they don't listen, you're not going to see your grandchildren grow up. I'm sorry, but that's a fact.